I became a chef because I couldn't be anything else. <laughs> uh, I, I was terrible in school, spent all my time chasing girls, didn't do any studying. Um, bought a Honda 50, which was very impressive for the girls at the time. Well, I think so. Um, but I, there was practically no jobs <clears throat> around at the time. 1982, left school and uh, there was a local restaurant that was looking for somebody and I went in on a false scheme, uh, 30 pounds a week it was at the time. And I was just, how old, I was 17, but I did my leaving cert. It was fantastic results. I was really, my father was terribly impressed with me. But anyway, I went in and I, 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 I was fortunate. It's in a, a bar here on the corner in Dungarvan called Mary's and there was a brilliant chef in there. It just so happened, well, not just so happened, we always knew it was good food. It was certainly the best, for me, the best in the county. And, uh, but you know when you get somebody who, who um, you, you just fall under their spell. And uh, I just, as soon as I walked into a professional kitchen, I just said, this is, this is kind of for me, I think. I liked everything about, you know, the tempo, the feeling, the pace of the work, the results, of course. Um, you know, for me, eating was a very important uh, part of cooking. You know, you can't be a good cook without appreciating food. And that was not necessarily at home uh, uh, terribly much, but it was later, subsequently, I discovered food. And um, so I stayed there for a year. And then just, uh, but I wanted to leave. I kind of wanted to, to you know, I had great friends in, in Dungarvan, but I, I wanted a, the wider world at that time was London. And uh, I had a brother uh, living just south of London. And a day after my 18th birthday, I just took the boat. It was an expression that I hope uh, uh, will never return. Uh, but we'll see about that. But anyway, and uh, when I, I stayed with him for about a week and I got a series of crappy jobs uh, working in local hotels. But what I did have was a, was a copy of the Michelin Guide. And I wrote off to practically every, not practically, every single restaurant with the Michelin star in London. And I got an answer from two. One was the Rue Brothers, uh, which were an hour huge uh, uh, at the time, and uh, another man called Nico Ledenis, who had uh, a two Michelin star restaurant in Battersea. And I, I vaguely knew what the whole Michelin business was, but what I did want to do um, was, uh, I don't know, do we have one or two one Michelin star restaurants here in Arden at the time, I think, but um, England was a far, was a, was a far more uh, adventurous place. And I was determined not to be a paddy. Uh, I, I wanted to go over and prove myself. I certainly didn't do it in school, um, but I wanted to do it in the kitchen. And if I was going to do it, I was going to aim for the top. And that was the Rue Brothers and that was Mission Stars and all that. And uh, so I got introduced to, um, I, I got a job firstly in the Rue Brothers. In the, well, they had many restaurants at the time, but a, a restaurant in Covent Garden that had a Mission Star. And I, I distinctly remember walking down to this gloomy basement one day full of ferocious people, ferocious French people that just disdained everybody and everything that wasn't French. And, um, you know, I came down and it was tough. It was tough. I didn't like it. I remember I burnt, I was on the pastry section and I was living down with my brother at the time. Uh, actually, I think I moved back in with him, back in with him, because uh, I couldn't afford a, a deposit on a place in London. And because I burnt the souffles, I had to sleep in Waterloo Station twice because they made me stay back and clean the kitchen. So it's not something apparently you do now. But I, so I slept on a bench in Waterloo Station, then went back into work the next day. A bit stinky, I'd say. But anyway, uh, it, it's funny, you know. I just didn't like the environment, and I, I got offered a job in a two-mission star, which was there was only four in the whole British Isles at the time, and uh, I think there was one three-mission star. Like Gavroche. And uh, I, I went out for an interview in Shinico and uh, I think I had a, I certainly spent what few bob I had on a suit. And I was fairly polished and well-mannered and, uh, I, you know, he could see that I really, I had ambition but no experience whatsoever. Very, very little, not for that kind of restaurant. But it was a very family-orientated uh, restaurant and, and it's where I wanted to be. And uh, I got the job, he took me under his wing. Anyway, long story short is, I was with him uh, in five restaurants, uh, chasing the ever elusive three stars. I became his head chef when I was 23. Um, I had left him, um, he sacked me once for going out with his daughter. And, uh, <laughs> and then he took me back when I was suitable, when he realized that, okay, you know, uh, six months later, that, uh, okay, maybe I, I can't separate these two for a while anyway. And uh, so I was with him until uh, I was 28. I spent eight and a half, nine years with him. And I left in September of 1997. We were in the, the Park Lane in the Grosvenor House Hotel. And uh, the, the third mission star finally came in the January, which kind of killed me, I have to say, because the work was done. And, uh, you know, but I wasn't there to receive this, this fantastic allocate. But look, you know, I came back to, to Dublin. I wanted to do a different 
type of work altogether. I was disillusioned with the whole starred scene. Uh, the restaurants that I really loved and admired in London, uh, and you know, it's like looking at a house for the first time. When you walk into a restaurant to, uh, for the first time, you just know this is what I want to do. A place called Kensington Place was a whole new sort of food revolution. I think it opened up in 1988, and we went there regularly, at least once a fortnight, uh, a gang of us. And the whole idea is that you could have plenty of wine, really good food, relaxed atmosphere, have a laugh, and there was none of that where I worked. It was all stiff and formal and hushed and reverential and it's not something that I wanted to do.